Now, Janet Planet, if you haven't seen it yet, it is a 2023. <laughs> I'm just reading the Wikipedia article. <laughs> okay. Janet Planet is well, Janet Planet is okay. yeah. Uh, also, 2023. I guess the festival releases that it came out, but it just just came out in theaters this past this week. Is, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Written and directed by Annie Baker in her featured directorial debut. Now, Annie Baker is one of the great contemporary American playwrights. I mean, maybe yes. the best out there doing it. Um, and even though this is her feature film debut, she has always been uh, adjacent to movies. The play that she won the Pulitzer for, The Flick, is sent in a movie theater. Uh, she's married to Nico Bombach, who's Noah Bombach's brother. He's a film critic. Um and I'm sure over the last decade, she's had to sit through plenty of Bombach dinner parties, you know, with the Bombach bros and Jennifer Jason Lee and Greta Gerwig going off oh, about wow. cinema. Um, and I was thinking about that because even though this is a movie that doesn't have a whole lot of like, probably doesn't have a whole lot of industry pressure on it. You know, the, the I couldn't even find the budget, which means it was micro. And you can tell in the film, this was not an expensive movie to make. Um uh, I have to feel like there was a lot of like in-house pressure, even if it was just like in her own head, because you're like, you're, you know, the, you're friends with Noah Bombach and Greta Gerwig. And like, now you're making your movie. And, and like, I, f I have to feel like for her, there was probably like, there was probably some sort of competitive instinct of like, of like, I really want to fucking like, I want to like, I want to fucking blow Noah's movies out of the fucking water. And maybe they're nicer people than me. And this didn't, this didn't occur to her, oh, come but on. like it, there has to be a healthy version. Yes, of right. Of She's course. like, I think she wanted to show that there was like, I think internally there was a fire she wanted to like show fucking Noah and Greta that that she could make a movie, that she could make a fucking movie. Um, and good news because Annie Baker can make a movie. Yes. Um, she made a. I'm just gonna say it now, Joe. Congratulations because Janet Planet is the best movie I've seen this year, not named Agro Drift. This is a five out of five. Thank this you. This is a five out of five for me. I loved every second of it. Yes. I did not want it to end. Uh, but then when it ended so fucking perfectly and poignantly and painfully, I was sat in my seat. I was fucking stunned. I was so emotionally affected by this movie. I loved it so, so much. Here is what the movie is about it takes place in the early 90s. And it is really a, a sort of POV movie about a kid growing up, a 11 year old girl named Lacey. And she lives with her mom, who's actually named Janet Planet. And it's, they never say it. And I'm wondering if it's like Planet or something funny, but they never like Annie. She never makes that joke. It would be it would be like she's not she's not like going for the easy jokes. But you see like a sign on she's an acupuncturist and you see a sign in her office that says like Janet Planet and like her you know credentials. Um, but the name points to a bigger theme, which is that this girl, Lacey, like lives on Janet Planet. She is obsessed with her mom. She sleeps in the same bed with her mom. Um, she watches everything she does and specifically she watches her go through three successive relationships in this movie um, a romantic relationship with Will Patton um, a, a, a sort of um, friendly but also competitive relationship with, with uh, Sophie Okanedu and then another sort of pseudo uh, romantic relationship with, with the, the amazing uh, Elias Cotillas um, and each relationship it forms sort of three chapters in the movie um, and all of these people are living in, in a sort of like sort of hip or living in or adjacent to a sort of hippie commune in rural Massachusetts and so it's these sort of Massachusetts New England hippies sort of living Living their lives. Um, but what it really is, is one of the great, one of the best uh, all time movies about childhood I have ever seen, anchored by one of the great performances by a child actor of all time, Zoe Ziegler. Zoe is, is she's a lonely kid. She is figuring out that she's gay, probably gay. Um, she's confronted on all sides by these fairly kind of insufferable, but like fun and interesting adults. Um, so she's in this sort of aggressively adult atmosphere and she's trying to figure out and she gives this like understated brilliant fucking performance and she really anchors the movie because you see everything through her eyes and what the movie seems to be saying and what I was just so affected by is that um adulthood is even the even the adulthood of these like creative 
independent hippies doing their art projects and being acupuncturists and all this like even even in that version of adulthood adulthood is this sort of cycle of repetition almost this sort of hopeless repetition it, 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 adults in this movie just seem to sort of like go in the same cycle have the same version of the th- of the same three thoughts over and over and over again and they will attempt versions of sort of like self-realization but it just cycles back into sort of adult emotions of like competitiveness and jealousy and like resentment um whereas like childhood in this movie not in a sentimental way not in a cheesy way in the in the most gorgeous realistic way i've ever seen childhood is presented as like the last great like mysterious part of your life this like this this just this like time of like confusion and uncertainty and magic where you don't have words for things and you're trying to figure out and you're seeing everything through a sort of keyhole and you're trying to make sense of it uh, but you're also at this age of like where you're sort of your instincts are pure and your emotions are pure and and like and the things that you want and the things that you're after are 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 just like are just like so like pure and innocent and authentic and so it's this kid having this this experience in the midst of these like hippie adults having their hippie adult sort of open relationship crises and things like that and it's just such a gorgeous fucking movie and stylistically i i would call it slow cinema it's very much in the reign of like kelly reichert or jim jarmusch um it also has that sort of backwoods indie vibe of phil morrison's june bug um but man Annie Baker is a fucking filmmaker, not just a playwright. She is a Let's fucking go. filmmaker. Like these I'm thrilled scenes, to hear it. Like the compositions are so gorgeous. Like limited cuts, like long shots, but the but awesome. like but like She's set set like up a, a play. set exactly. Set up a gorgeous gorgeous composition. Let the actors act. Yep. Keep the dialogue efficient and meaningful but like but like but like don't waste words. It is just such a gorgeous gorgeous movie. Every scene crushes, Joe. Every fucking Damn. scene crushes. It, Bro, I just loved it so, so, so much. This. Yes, I was so, like, I was, like, it's up there for me as, like, greatest all-time, like, in a theater watching a movie experiences. I was just, like, enthralled and in love and so affected by it the whole time. Oh, my God. It's yay. so funny. It's, like, it's, like, oh, And this kid's performance. Uh, is just phenomenal and it's like yeah and it goes against type of kid performances it's not like mm. like like i don't like like you, you you even wonder if the kid knows there's a camera running you know like there what there's no like child actor mm. tropes it's just such a natural performance and then occasionally when any baker will like selectively sort of like go for a stylistic choice she also nails that there's a scene where like they go to the mall to like meet with Will Pat Will Patton also has another daughter and so they go to like meet so that the two daughters can hang out um and there's scenes of them like running through this like early 90s mall with like and it's so well recreated yeah. with like you know your cool. JC Pennies and your Claire's and your mm. and your B Dalton's and everything and there's a scene of them just like running through the mall and it's like a tracking shot right alongside them as they like run past all these storefronts and it's just and they're so like happy and joyous and they don't they don't even know why just because they're kids and they're running through a mall. And it's like, and there's moments like that in the midst of like, of all the adult shit going on. And it's such an incredible blending of all these elements. Uh, I also do want to give a shout out to the, to, to, um, Julian Nicholson, who is like, man, what a phenomenal actor. Um, and she, it's interesting because like her performance, like comes on in waves and it gets it gets stronger throughout the movie because early on you're almost exclusively seeing things through the kids' eyes, and I'm almost like, man, it's like is like I love this, but it's like Julian Nicholson going to get something to do, and of course she does. Like, but like Andy Baker like saves her moments for later on, and I think sort of it's because you're you're literally seeing it through the kids' eyes, so it's like when the kid is like prepared to sort of understand what her mom is going through, that's when you start to get more like more lines and more dialogue and more pr- screen cool. time for Julian Nicholson. So the movie is just so like precisely and masterfully made. Um, all all the other adult performances are great too. Like I said, Elias Codius uh, is like the like cult the sort of hippie commune leader and is just like perfect he's so good um will Patton is this like stoic possibly like almost abusive like the relationship just abruptly ends when he gets like a little aggressive he gets aggressive with the kid and the relationship is just like over and he's like gone it's kind of amazing um sophie okonedo is like 
sort of in a relationship with Elias Codius as well. She's like part of the artistic commune and she needs a place to stay for a while. So she's like the second chapter. Um, but it's just like, man, what a movie. I cannot recommend it enough. It's, I don't think a lot of people are seeing it. It doesn't seem like it's making a lot of money. I really, really would strongly urge everyone to go see Janet Planet. I know I look like fucking Bonnaroo Uncle Sam right now. I'm telling you, you can trust me. I, I really love good movies, and I'm telling you, this is a fucking really good movie. You <laughs> You're can, begging You them. can take my word. Go see Janet Planet in theaters, okay? Let's get Annie Baker making some more yeah. movies, please. Cool. Please, so okay? That's, that's amazing. So you're giving it a five. I'm giving it a five. It's my first five. That's what I'm it's hearing. my first five. Yeah, I'm giving it a five. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad you liked it. Annie has never let me down before, and I'm so glad to hear that she's killing it behind the camera. Good for her. I'm so happy. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'll see it next week. You're going to see it next week. I, 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 I'm I excited to see what you think. Like, I, And I also don't know, I don't think it's like a... I don't know if everyone's going to have this experience. It really mm -hmm. struck a chord with me. I think Great. there's enough objectively like masterful about it that what I'm saying is going to be true for most people, but it definitely just like struck a specific chord with me in a lot of ways, but I'm very excited to hear what you, you have to say about it. 